Hey guys, Cam here from Pocket Lint and Android 9 Pie is official and out for Pixel owners and it comes with a handful of new interesting features. It is worth noting though that just because all of these are available on the Pixel phones now doesn't mean they'll all be on other smartphones going forward when the software begins a wider rollout. But let's get on with it. Now first up is taking control of your digital well-being. With Android Pie, Google launched a new feature called Digital Wellbeing that lets you see a breakdown of how much screen time you're getting on your smartphone and which apps are taking up your time. You can also set time limits on specific apps, which is useful if you spend too much time browsing Facebook or Instagram. Currently, it's a beta feature that you need to sign up for, so first click the link we've left in the description and then register with the email address you use on the Play Store. Once registered, you'll get an invitation email with a link to the updated feature in the Play Store. Click the link and then update and you'll have access to the function within the phone's main settings app. Next is Wind Down and this is part of digital well-being. You can schedule it so that it turns your screen to grayscale and activates Do Not Disturb at a set time every day. And that helps you to disconnect from your phone. Thirdly, activate and use the gesture navigation. Now by default, Android Pie offers the same navigation buttons you're used to seeing on Android at the bottom of the screen, but there is a new method. Head to settings, system, gestures, and tap swipe up on the home button and toggle the switch. Now when you swipe up, you'll get to the new multitasking recent app screen. Swipe up again to get to your app drawer. Next is split screen multitasking. Now because of this new control system, there's a new way to enable multitasking as well. Head to the recent app screen, then press and hold the app icon above the app's thumbnail card. And then choose split screen. Now choose whichever of the other apps you want to go alongside it, either scrolling through the cards or swiping up to see your app drawer. To disable it, just swipe the split in the middle of the screen until it's right at the bottom. Next, adaptive battery. Now Google has introduced its AI smarts to make the battery life last longer. With adaptive battery switched on, your phone learns which apps you need most and limits use of others, even predicting when you might need particular apps to get the most out of your battery. Go to settings, battery, adaptive battery, and then switch it on if it isn't already. Back to multitasking and quickly switching between apps. Grab the home button and slide it right until you get to the app you want. You can use it to quickly scroll through any recent apps and go straight into them. Next up is Smart Actions. Now swipe up the app drawer and now you'll see two actions beneath a row of your most used apps at the top. These will typically be for two actions you perform regularly, whether that be WhatsApping a friend or launching a specific Slack channel. Screenshots. Now you can take a screenshot the regular way by pressing and holding the power and volume down buttons together, or you can now press and hold the power button and when the pop-up option shows up, tap screenshot on the screen. Next up is text selection. Android now has an easier and more convenient method of moving your text selection cursor. Tap and hold on any text and then grab the little blue indicator and you'll get a magnification window pop-up to show you clearly where the cursor is. And then there's dark mode. Just like Oreo, you can switch the entire phone to a dark theme just by choosing a dark wallpaper. When you do, it turns the quick settings and app drawer to a dark gray color rather than the white that it would be by default. Next up, showing the battery percentage in the status bar. Now in the battery settings, switch on the toggle that says battery percentage, and then that will show you the level in the status bar. Next up is the rotation suggestion button. Now one of my favorite features is quite subtle. Now when you rotate the phone, you get a little rotation suggestion button in the nav bar, rather than the page automatically turning. Press it and you'll go to landscape or portrait, depending on which way you're turning the screen. Now one of the most important features, which isn't exclusive to Android Pie, is messages on the web. This is incorporated into Google's latest messaging app, and that now lets you send and receive SMS messages from your desktop browser. Head to messages.android.com on your desktop and toggle the Remember This Computer option if it's your own computer. You'll see a QR code on the screen, so now you need to open the messages app on your Android phone Tap the options dots in the top corner and choose the messages for web option. Now scan the QR code after allowing access to your camera. And now you can see your messages inbox and use your browser to send new messages. Lastly, there's the Easter egg. 
Android Pie's Easter egg is accessed pretty much the same way it always has been. Go to Settings, then System, tap About Phone and then Android Version, and now repeatedly tap on Android Version in the pop-up window. So that's been it. There's some Android Pie basics for you to sink your teeth into. Let us know what you discover in the comments below. I'm at Cam Bunton on all the important social media networks. Follow me there, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you again soon.